eat butter and no spreads, no margarines. Don't be afraid of it. Don't feel guilty. Butter was made for you by God to nourish you and to nourish your children. Don't turn your back on it. That would be very impolite. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. And now here is our host and producer, Hilda Labrada-Gore. Hey, Hilda here. Butter has fat-soluble vitamins A, D, and K important trace minerals, arachidonic acid, cholesterol, and the Wolzen factor. These are just a few of the reasons butter is better. This is episode 396, and our guest today is none other than Sally Fallon Morell, the president and founder of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Sally is the author of Nourishing Traditions, Nourishing Broth, and Nourishing Diets, along with many other important books. Today we discuss with Sally all things butter and why it is so much better than margarine, shortening, and spreads. Sally kicks things off explaining how butter got its bad rap and who did the maligning and why. She reviews the ingredients found in butter and in butter replacements, going over the damage that these artificial spreads do to us. She also goes over exactly how The vitamins and nutrients found in butter benefit our bodies and those of our growing children. Some benefits include improved hormonal function, cognitive function, and fertility. Before we dive into the conversation, we need your opinion on this show. What's working? What's not? Take a minute or two to fill out our podcast survey. And once you give us your feedback, you'll be eligible to win the new Weston A. Price Foundation book on our 11 Dietary Principles. We will be picking five winners at random from those who fill out the survey. And the survey closes on December 12th. So act now and you just might get your book before the holidays, which will make a perfect stocking stuffer. The link will be in the show description, but it is also found on our About the Show podcast page on the westonaprice.org website. Thank you in advance. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And a quick word of thanks to our sponsor, Maritime Seafood Company. Maritime Seafood Company ships sustainable, wild-caught seafood directly to your door. All of their seafood is frozen at the time of harvest, packed in eco-friendly packaging, and delivered to you within one to two days. Talk about fresh. So eat well and wild with the full assurance that you are supporting small family fisheries that have your health and the health of the environment in mind. Our family loves this seafood. I'm probably going to order some more just now for the holidays. Their shrimp is not shrimp sized. They are so large and flavorful. So do yourself a favor and order today and taste the difference yourself. Visit MaritimeSeafood.com. That's M-A-R-I-T-H-Y-M-E Seafood.com. And use the discount code Weston A for 10% off your first order. That's MaritimeSeafood.com. M-A-R-I-T-H-Y-M-E Seafood.com. Eat wild and well. This is Hilda Labrada Gore, and you're listening to Wise Tradition. Welcome to Wise Tradition, Sally. <laughs> Thanks, Hilda. Great to be back, and great to have you back. Thank after you. After all your travels. I know. I'm so glad to be here, although the world is magnificently wonderful and Amazing. I learned so much in Mongolia and Turkey and Greece, too. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Turkey's a place I'd like to go to. Oh, you would love it. The yeah. food is so fresh. Yeah. Well, speaking of fresh and amazing food, I want to talk with you today about butter. Okay. Yes. I'm so My thrilled. My favorite food. <laughs> I know. And I'm so thrilled that I feel like butter is making a comeback. People are realizing that it's nourishing on so many levels. Can we talk about, first of all, why was it maligned, Sally? Why was it cast aside in like the 70s or something? Oh, earlier than that. So just to put it all in perspective, in 1900, Americans consumed 18 pounds of butter per person per year. <laughs> and, 18 pounds uh-huh. per person uh-huh. per year. Yeah, well, that I probably consume that in half a year. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I consume four pounds a month. So wow. Yeah. Anyway. And then, of course, there was this long attack on butter, and consumption went down to four pounds 
per person per year. That was the low. Now it's creeping back up. It's about five and a half pounds per person per year, which seems like nothing really when you realize (laughs) how much you could eat. But, you know, most people do avoid butter. And the reason they do is because of this campaign, which started in 1913 with Procter & Gamble when they invented Crisco. Well, they had, it wasn't a new invention. It was this technique. They were taking cottonseed oil which was a liquid, and they figured out how to harden it by partial hydrogenation so they could make candles out of cottonseed oil. Oh. We're just taking this waste from the cotton industry, and that was a big industry in the South. So Procter & Gamble was making candles with it, and then electricity came along, and there was no use for this product. So they said, well, we will feed this to people instead. That's the genesis of this. And so they made it a little softer so you could spread it, And then they came out with this Crisco cookbook. Mm. And in the book, it said that mothers who use Crisco instead of lard have cleaner houses. Their houses smell better. They're more modern, more enlightened, and their children will grow up with better characters (gasps) if they use Crisco instead of lard. They knew how to push all the buttons of the upcoming American housewife, all the things she wanted. She wanted a clean house. She wanted to be considered modern. She wanted her to be proud of her children. And that's what they said. So that was the marketing used to get people to buy Crisco, this cottonseed bread product instead of lard. But did that also replace butter? Yes. So then they made people think it was vulgar to use lard, Mm -hmm. that sort of rednecks use lard. And we're sophisticated and new American middle class and we use Crisco. Okay. But the attack was also on butter because they figured out how to use these partially hydrogenated cottonseed oil to make margarine Mm. and to make it taste like butter and make it look like butter with the colorings. So the attack on lard was really direct, but the attack on butter was a little more subtle and it was, you should feel guilty for using butter. It's the food of an effete, wealthy, spoiled people. So you should feel guilty for using butter and lard is vulgar. And that's pointing everyone towards shortenings and margarines. And then didn't the study by Ansel Keys kind of demonize animal fats as well, moving people in this direction? Yes, all animal fats were demonized. And the thing in animal fats that they could demonize was cholesterol and saturated fat because those were not in Crisco. So they picked the two things that weren't in Crisco and then they started on this demonization campaign. And since people had started using shortenings and margins and things, heart disease was going up. It was this new disease. But of course, they didn't look at the vegetable oils. They blamed it on the foods that people were not eating as much of, which was with butter and animal fats. Wow. It was a real conspiracy. And Very mendacious, lots of lies. A real campaign that really permeated the consciousness of the American people and then later the world. So let's reverse the trend. And it is, like we said, it is coming back. Let's talk about how butter is actually good for you. So butter is the fat in nature for the growth and development of all mammals, including human mammals. So it has unique components that support growth and development and starting with the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, and K. It's one of the few foods that has them all, as long as the cows are on green grass. So it's getting vitamin A from the carotenes, it's getting making K2 from K1 in the grass, and it's getting the vitamin D from sunlight. So that's the first thing about butter. It is really the healthiest fat as far as these vitamins are concerned. Butter is got some really unique fats in it. One is butyric acid, which is unique to butter. The other way we get butyric acid is by digesting high fiber foods and we make butyric acid out of it. But in butter, it's there ready-made. And butyric acid is very important for digestion and it's particularly important for the thyroid gland. Oh, really? Yeah. The thyroid gland needs butyric acid for receptors. Then butter, if it's on pe- from pastured cows, is full of minerals, including iodine. It will concentrate iodine if iodine's in the soil. And that's why I say this combination of vitamin A, butyric acid, and iodine make butter the ideal food for the thyroid gland. 
And what have we seen in the past 50 years is the explosion of thyroid problems. One in two people has some kind of thyroid disorder. And I mean, to me, the answer is obvious. We put our cows in confinement and we're just not eating butter, even if we were. Wow. And so what are the benefits of vitamins A, D, and K? I know Dr. Price found that these were activators, fat-soluble activators that were good for us, but what do they do exactly? Okay, so these are the controllers of everything else in the body. You can't absorb minerals without these vitamins. You can't absorb the B vitamins and vitamin C without these vitamins. You can't make hormones. And this is really important for development. Boys and girls, when they're developing, it's not like they don't need hormones. They need testosterone. They need estrogen to develop in the normal way. And you can't make hormones without vitamin A. And you can't make hormones without saturated fat. And the saturated fat, of course, is in the butter. And so what do you see in children who are deprived of wonderful foods like butter? Like what happens if they don't get them? They don't develop as optimally as they should. Their brains don't develop optimally as they should. We get a lot of sexual confusion is one thing that you get depression in your children. They don't grow as tall as they should. I mean, there's just lots of things that can happen. And I see anxiety and depression and issues with cognitive function on all levels in society right now. Right. But especially in the children, especially. And then you get the what I call the adrenal problems, which are things like allergies asthma, anxiety, as you say, rashes, you see. Wow. So now let's talk about the kid that is eating butter. What are some of the benefits that they'll see? Okay, so the benefits are they're getting the fat-soluble vitamins, and probably every day you're putting butter on all your food. You're absorbing your minerals because you need these vitamins to absorb your minerals. You're getting a variety of special fats that have different roles in the body. You're getting cholesterol. And that's very important, especially for babies and toddlers. They cannot make cholesterol, and they absolutely need cholesterol for the development of their brain, their nervous system, the digestive tract, and for hormone production. And so that's why there's cholesterol in mother's milk. Yes. And special enzymes to ensure the assimilation of all that cholesterol. Now, if you buy milk replacer for baby cows, the third ingredient is animal fat. Because the scientists know that without the animal fat in the milk replacer, the cows don't do well. But they don't put that animal fat in the formulas. No, all formula, including the crunchy organic formulas, are skim milk and vegetable oils. There's no cholesterol in these formulas. Of there, course, that's Yeah, I mean, it's so really tragic. a type of genocide of our young people. And we're supposed to know so much. We're supposed to be scientific, right? But the way they make these formulas is has nothing to do with science. It's just based on the finances. Right, the profit. Yeah. It's so unfortunate and it's so strange that we give calves exactly what they need. Because there's no money in sick animals, but there's a lot of money in sick children. There's another thing in butter and all animal fats that is very important, and that's something called arachidonic acid. And that's an omega-6 fatty acid. I say it's only in animal fats. And it has many important roles. It's very important for healthy skin. It helps the cells of your skin be stuck together, so to speak, sort of watertight. And cohesion. Yes, and good cell-to-cell junctures. And the same with the intestinal tract, the lining of the intestinal tract. The arachidonic acid is critical for that. Arachidonic acid, 11% of the brain is arachidonic acid. 11%. Yes. So it's very high in the brain or should be. Here's the really interesting thing about arachidonic acid. We make our endocannabinoids out of arachidonic acid. It is the base substance to make our internal marijuana. And we have receptors for this marijuana. And I say a well-nourished child or adult eating lots of butter, the natural state is to be high all the time. Yes, Yes. I love it when you say that. So there are these feel-good chemicals that should be surging through us that butter enables to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what are we seeing today? We're seeing such high rates of addiction in our young people. And we can't be judgmental because these young people don't feel right. They don't feel happy and exuberant and enthusiastic. They don't have that kind of mellow ability to be focused and mellow at the same time. Relaxed but focused. And we should be. That's the way healthy children are. 
They can go through periods of intense concentration. We talked at the start of this Mm. conversation about my recent travels. I saw this one toddler, Sally, maybe he was between two and three years old. He was crying constantly. He was crying constantly. And I realized the only time he was quiet was when his parents would put like a little iPad or phone in his hands. And it's like he was trying to dopamine regulate, like he was trying to get happy. And maybe he just needed more butter. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, well, and. They eat butter in Mongolia. So yes, yes, this was another part of the world. Oh, okay. And these were just regular tourists. Yes, these children are not happy, and you just can't blame them. They're just not getting fed the right ingredients to make happy chemicals in their bodies. And the natural state of children and adults is to be happy. Even if things are going poorly for you, still the natural state is to be happy and cheerful. And they can't do it. So, of course, the marijuana or other drugs make them feel normal temporarily. Or devices, I would dare say. You yes, know what I mean? You get a little do- dopamine hit. Oh, I got another like on this post. Yeah. Or for a kid, oh, this little game, I made it to the next level. Yeah. But that's a poor substitute. For... Well, of course, it's a substitute. Yes. For the real thing. Yes. And so what we've seen in the trend towards less and less butter is more and more unhappiness in our children and more tendency to addictive behaviors. Right. Absolutely. But as you say, consumption of butter is going up and this is actually giving the food industry fits. <laughs> uh, you might think, well, to go from five to five and a half percent, that's not much, but it's, these small changes make big differences in the food industry. And dare, well, let's talk about the dairy industry. Yes. They have deliberately changed the national dairy herd from Jersey cows, which produce a lot of butterfat, to the Holstein cows, which are low in butterfat. So we have a shortage of butterfat because of these policies. And then they figured out that they make more profit if they put the butterfat into ice cream than if they put it into butter or, heaven forbid, actually leave it in the milk. Right, right. So that's where you get this big push for giving skim milk to children, which is just a horrible thing to do. Because they'd rather make the money by putting that butter fat into ice cream. They'll make more per pound or whatever uh, right. than they would keeping it in exactly. the milk. Exactly. So you have these kids that go through their day. They never get any butter. They never get any animal fat, low fat meals or wrong fat meals. By five o'clock in the afternoon, they're actually starving for fats. And they go to the freezer and eat a half a pound of ice cream. Right. Standing up in front of the freezer. Oh. They just can't help themselves. So they're getting the butter fat, but they're also getting all the sugar and antifreeze and all the stuff that's in ice cream. Maybe this is why parents sometimes call 5 p.m. the arsenic hour. They say you either want to give it to your kids or take it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> because they're all hitting this crisis point because of their lack of good fat. Yeah. And I always put cheese out for them. Have a piece of cheese till dinner. Coming up. Sally reveals the most troubling ingredients in margarine and vegetable oil spreads. And she also tells us which butter is the gold standard that we should all be looking for. You're listening to the Wise Traditions podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Paleo Valley. Did you know that companies can claim that their beef is grass fed as long as it was fed grass at some point in its life? Oftentimes the cows will be finished on grain but the products are still marketed as grass-fed. Also, meat can be marked American-made as long as it was packaged in America, meaning it could be flown in from anywhere around the world, and as long as it's packaged here, it can be marketed as if it was raised in the U.S. Avoid these fake labels and get the real deal. Paleo Valley Grass-Fed Beef Sticks. They are sourced from 100% grass-fed and grass-finished cows that are never fed grains or given harmful antibiotics. And they come from small family-owned farms right here in the USA. Go to paleovalley.com and use the code WISE for 15% off. That's paleovalley.com and the code word WISE. An optimal carnivore. Are you struggling with brain fog, a lack of creativity, or a low mood? Try Brain Nourish from Optimal Carnivore. It contains grass-fed beef brain and lion's mane mushrooms, two superfoods that are known to help improve focus elevate mood, enhance memory, and boost creativity. Optimal Carnivore uses only 100% real mushrooms in their products, and the beef brain is sourced from the highest quality, 
Regenerative Farms in New Zealand. So go to amazon.com slash optimal carnivore and use the code Weston10 when you place your order to receive 10% off all products. That's amazon.com slash optimal carnivore and the code Weston10. This is Hilda Labrata Gore, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. So, yes, we've got to change this, and the choice of butter over other fats is going to make this change happen. Now, let's talk about what is the trouble with the spreads you were mentioning earlier, Sally? What are the bad ingredients in the margarines and the vegetable spreads and whatnot? Well, the really bad ingredient in margarine is trans fats, trans fatty acids, and these are the liquid fats that have been manipulated chemically to make them hard. And the, which was so strong, indicating that the trans fats are bad on every level. I mean, they interfere with hormone production. They interfere with enzymes, kind of just stop things from happening on the cellular level. And so the industry actually has more or less gotten the trans fats out of the food supply. And now I mean, you can still buy margarine in the stores, but now people are buying the spreads, the healthy spreads. And these don't have trans fats in them, and we have tested them. But what do they have in them? Well, they're still made with rancid vegetable oils, and they've got thickeners in them. And the main thickener they're using is soy protein isolate. Oh. So there's going to be soy in these spreads. And then they have these heart-healthy spreads. Yes. (laughs) And these have, they're industrial chemicals. They're actually the waste from the waste of the wood pulp industry. <gasps> and when they get in the water, they cause sex inversion in the fish. Oh, and no. Because they do lower cholesterol. They're putting them in these heart-healthy spreads. That's why they can call them heart-healthy. Yes, because they lower cholesterol. But the thing is, you need that cholesterol. This whole fixation on cholesterol led us in the wrong direction. And what's the problem with the soy protein isolates that they use as a thickener? What does that Well, the soy cause? protein isolates are very high in estrogens. Genistein and diatsin, these are isoflavins that are, have estrogenic properties. And so let's say I keep putting that on my toast every day. What would it do to me? Well, in women, it tends to give them problems with their menstrual periods. In growing girls, it causes very early and large breast development. Typically, these girls menstruate very early. And then in boys, it suppresses testosterone. So it's a hormone disruptor across the board. Yes. (laughs) And that's what's going in the healthy spreads. Yes. And then parents are buying them because they think, oh, this is better than butter. I did that study, or not study, but I should have pictures of this in my slide presentation. We dump a tub of spread on a plate, and then we put a stick of butter on a plate, and we put them out in the garden. And the birds came along, and they knew where the real food was, and they pecked at the butter, and they didn't touch the spreads. And then a squirrel came along, and I thought squirrels were vegetarians, but the squirrel grabbed the stick of butter and ran off with it. Oh, you're kidding me. (laughs) So no animal would touch the healthy spread. They know where the real food is. Instinctively. So there's other things in these spreads, emulsifiers, hexane, which is basically gasoline. It's used as a solvent. Bleach to get, when they make this stuff, it's a gray color, so they have to bleach it. Soy protein isolate and then the sterols. So our artificial flavors, they can make margarine taste like butter. So yeah, I mean, margarine shouldn't be touched with a 10-foot pole. And what do you think it's going to take to get that word out? Are people going to have to get very sick before they, kind of hitting rock bottom before they face the truth and realize? Well, I think what happens is that the butter substitutes lead to infertility, whereas butter supports fertility. And there was actually a study on this. The, it was at Harvard, this guy, Chivaro, they found that women drinking low-fat milk and avoiding butter had trouble getting pregnant, whereas women who drank full-fat milk and ate butter had no problems getting pregnant. And so when they did this study, they said, oh, well, if you're having trouble getting pregnant, eat full-fat milk and some ice cream, they said. Until you get pregnant, then you go back on your low-fat diet. Oh, no. (laughs) But what's going to happen is that the people who don't figure this out and start feeding their families real food like butter will not have grandchildren. And this is what I call the natural selection of the wise. This is how nature works. It sounds cruel, but that's nature's way. And the people who are not going to feed real food to their children, their children most likely will not have grandchildren or certainly great-grandchildren. I wanted to ask you a side question here. 
what is the difference between raw butter and butter that you might just get off the grocery store shelf? Yeah. Well, raw butter is certainly better. There is something called the Wolzen factor in butter, which is an anti-arthritis compound. It helps you prevent arthritis, and that's destroyed by pasteurization. I see. And I think the vitamins are probably not as easy to absorb after pasteurization. But I still say all butter is good. Yes. Yeah, even if it's just a store butter. It's better than the alternatives. And now in the stores, you can get Irish butter, uh-huh. pastured butter. And some stores carry New Zealand butter, and it's always on the very top shelf. That means that's the least (laughs) profit margin. The things at eye level are the highest profit margin. That's where all the spreads are. Oh, I see. They want you to get the stuff that's within eyesight, eye level, right? Yeah. yeah. And raw butter, you said there are a couple of sources maybe you can get at the store, at least the Irish and the New Zealand butter. You can also get it from your local farm, probably, right? Yes, and use our shopping guide. There are some sources of raw butter that you can have sent to you. Oh. So it's out there. Some um, states you can get raw butter in California. I think there's about 15 states where you can get raw butter now. So cultured butter. I've seen cultured butter. What's the difference between that and raw, or is it the same thing? No, so cultured butter is butter where you've added a culture to the cream, and the cream gets a little sour, and the butter has a beautiful taste. This is what the French butter and the European butter is like, but it's not necessarily raw. Oh, really? Yeah, so, oh, I didn't know that. So ideally would be... Cultured raw butter from grass-fed cows. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in the shopping yeah, guide? <laughs> grazing in salty marshes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but short of that, all butter is better than the alternatives. Absolutely. And don't be afraid of it. I mean, you don't have to eat perfectly every day, but you definitely want to eat butter every day. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, now I want to pose to you the question I often pose at the end. Mm-hmm. If the listener could do one thing to improve their health, it may be related to butter. What would you recommend that <laughs> yes, they do? eat butter and no spreads, no margarines. Don't be afraid of it. Don't feel guilty. Butter was made for you by God to nourish you and to nourish your children. Don't turn your back on it. That would be very impolite. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for this conversation, Sally. Thanks, Hilda. Our guest today was Sally fallon Morell. Check out her blog at nourishingtraditions.com. And I'm Hilda Labrata-Gore, the host and producer of the Wise Traditions podcast for the Weston A. Price Foundation. You can find me at holistichilda.com. And for the transcript for this episode, visit our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the podcast page. And now for a little tip. You can get your hands on the Butter is Better brochure that includes a lot of the information we shared on today's episode. The Weston A. Price Foundation sells its brochure for only 25 cents. It's cheaper than a newspaper and likely more useful. You can buy in bulk and get copies for only 15 cents to share with friends and family. Just go to our order materials page on the website, westonaprice.org, and I'll make things easy by putting a link in the show notes so you can order your Butter is Better brochure today. And thank you so much for listening, my friend. Stay well. Hasta pronto. On behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation, thanks for listening. We have many free resources to support you on your health journey. Visit WestonAPrice.org to find podcasts, articles, videos, and more. You can also find a local chapter near you for help in finding sources of great food. We invite you to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism by becoming a member. Thanks again, and take care. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.